Thank you. Uh, a special thank you to Wayside Saloon where we're at right now. Uh, to Amber for giving us this opportunity uh, to be able to be out here. Uh, kind of speak on what we're doing. Uh, do a positive thing for the A15. Because uh, that's exactly what we want to do. Get to know you guys. Uh, engage with the community. Uh, and give that positive influence. Uh, some other things. we got sponsors. These t-shirts over here, they look great. So big shout out to Elliot Graphics and Josh Elliott uh, over there. Uh, and the t-shirts are sponsored as well uh, through Bacher, Delvin Bunker. Uh, he's been a long time supporter of us, so we appreciate him very much. Uh, he's not here right now, but uh, he knows how, how appreciative we are of him for sure. Uh, Task Construction, Aaron Wolf, another sponsor of the t-shirts. Uh, we appreciate him. We're just getting to know him. We want to continue to engage with him as well. On top of that, we got the Freeport Club, Connor Shoemaker. Uh, that's actually another great thing going on over there. Uh, seeing that golf course be rejuvenated uh, with a young mind, a kid our age. Uh, it's special to see that. Uh, he's working his tail off to bring that place back. So big shout out to Connor Shoemaker. Uh, thank you for supporting us. Uh, the last one we can't forget is where Danny and I work. Right now in the summer, we're back home uh, working at Diningers, uh, Brooke Diningers. Uh, she has done an immense amount of work for us, uh, put in the time to help us get these shirts done ASAP. Uh, she's given us countless amount of support, money, uh, her time, uh, employing us. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're, uh, we're appreciative of all these supporters, sponsors. Uh, so if you haven't grabbed a t-shirt yet, get right over there. A big thank you to my parents, Don and John Carlson, for being over there helping me out. Uh, helping Dan and I out, it means a lot. Uh, very appreciative for everyone, especially that's here. Uh, it means a lot. Uh, if you haven't got any pizza, make sure to eat up. Uh, I know I'm getting hungry, so I'll be over there soon. Uh, if you can't read it over there, the merchandise, T-shirts for ten dollars, bracelets for five dollars. We also have a uh, donation uh, box over there. All the money that we raise through this will be for travel as we continue to grow. Uh, yeah, so I appreciate all the support with that. Uh, cash bar right over there. Obviously, you can see that. Uh, the last thing I want to mention: uh, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you have not already. Three Six Five Unlimited on YouTube. Uh, thank you. I'm gonna let Dan uh, talk. Otherwise, I'll talk about that. Um, so yeah, Bryce kind of covered all the ins and outs. Just want to say thank you to everybody showing up. It means more than we even than you guys think to us to actually have faces here and all that the actual support instead of just you know social media. This is stuff in person that we can all celebrate. But we're gonna kind of switch back, throw back to 2020 November. I had um, composition class at school, and I had a uh, we didn't have to do a paper or anything for the class. We had to do a podcast, and of course I called Bryce. It's like, hey, I need help to do this. We were doing it over all American TV show. A lot of you guys probably watch that. We had to talk about like character analysis, all that. We did a 15, 20 minute episode, wouldn't you say? And I think within a day or two, you FaceTimed me back and said, we got to start a podcast. Like it was just, we clicked the way we talked together, didn't cut each other off. It was, it was kind of easy and it kind of got the ideas going. And by Thanksgiving break, two, three weeks later in November of 2020, we started the Art of Football. 365 at the time, which was only audio through Anchor, and a little app that we found. Transitioned uh, January of 2021 to Zoom. Once we went back to school, we are both in different locations all year, so it was kind of hard. Phil Mueller, Keegan Thielen, Ben Swords, I know we're missing a couple, but those are made of our graphic designers over the years, the t-shirts, logos, templates for YouTube. Those guys have been huge. All the logos you see, Philip designed the t-shirts. Keegan does our clip arts. Ben designed our first original t-shirts ever. Those guys really make this work and that went along with us updating our you know, backgrounds for the YouTube videos when we made the change. And then it's almost, we're almost 90 episodes later. I mean, that's really what it feels like at this point. Seeing former guests, coaches, players, people that we've grown up with in here. This is why we do it. We want to make an event try and start some change because Freeport needs change, the whole A-Row 5 needs change, and it's going to start with people in this room creating a change. So, kind of before we get going with some more speaking stuff, I'm going to set this down, get some more guests coming, and then we'll get fired up. But I, uh, I just want to say that, that's kind of the backstory of how we started, you know, I'm going to take the credit for starting because it was, you know, my class when we <laughs> uh, No, but it, it's been a blast, you know, we butt heads from time to time different stuff, communicating a lot of us over the phone being six, seven hours away from each other for, what, eight, nine months out of the year. 
But there would be nobody else I'd rather do this with. I'm proud of him, and it's been a hell of a ride, but we're only getting started. So, to piggyback off Gannon, I mean, I, I, like I said, I could talk all day. Uh, but I do want to say a couple things here. Uh, we got some, some kids our age, some kids younger, parents, uh, they're all older. Uh, I do just want to say one thing. Uh, I know it's coming from a 21 year old, so take it how you want it. Uh, but even when you're an adult, you don't have to stop dreaming. Uh, work for something that you want. Uh, chasing, a, chasing a dream that if you've got an idea, you have a vision, don't sit there and don't act. Get up and act. It, it doesn't take much to, to see it through. Uh, and at the end of the day, you just do it. Just do it. So no matter the age, uh, no matter what you've done in your life, if you like your nine to five job or not, uh, take the risk, uh, jump off the ship, and I can promise you if, you, if you reach for your dreams, then they're gonna become reality. Uh, and I know Gannon and I are a big believer uh, in manifesting things. Uh, and I mean, we got people sitting in front of us right now, uh, and this started off with uh, a little app called Anger. And now we got people here eating food, celebrating with us. Uh, so I promise you, your dreams can turn into reality. I don't care how old you are, who you are, where you come from. At the end of the day, anything is possible. Remember that. Uh, so you guys take some time, continue eating, and then we're going to have some speakers coming up. I appreciate that. Somebody on them 
Uh, I say bring them in as a, as, as a quarterback, which is a little different, uh, becoming a leader. Uh, but he had this, this amazing gift that he had to saw, and, and, and I saw it early. And what we want to do is just bring that out of him and, and just make him better. And, and, and with that treatment, I think he kind of bought into what, what we were doing, even though he didn't see the light at first. Uh, with each athlete that we had, I love all my athletes. I do, I truly love all my athletes, but you can't love them all the same. So, so with each one, as, as say, more of our, this, this gentleman to the right of me, uh, you have to be hard on him. I can't let him slide with anything. He doesn't get away with anything. He'll tell you, I don't let him get away with nothing. There's things that other people can do, and he'll see it. He'll tell me, well, you let them do it, but they're not you. So he used that against me a lot, but I can care less. He <laughs> know he at the end of the day, he, he's going to be treated, uh, uh, he, we're preparing him for that next step. You know, once you get to college, those coaches don't care. You know, you are, I ain't saying you become a number, but you do become a number because you add to the success of their lives and where they move to. Or, so it's always somebody looking to take their spot. So if we stay on him, prepare for that moment, once he gets there, it'll be smooth sailing. The, the, the athletic part is easy. That's that mentality part which is one of the you keep consistent on that side. <laughs> so I was giving Zane a little bit of crap over there telling me he's looking a little bit bigger than last time I saw him last summer. So kind of talk about a little bit of your, you know, I don't talk about your weight gain specifically, but just what is something that you went into uh, from your maturation from now freshman to being a senior, physically and mentally kind of growing on and on too. What did you do specifically? Let's get a little selfish for a second and kind of talk about that. Uh, well, like freshman year, like, I didn't just take football serious. Sophomore year was kind of like in the middle, but um, I lost one of my friends, May 17, um, one in my junior season. And, like, it, like, made me, it made me want to take it more serious. And, like, because I know, like, this can be going at any moment. Like, um, being with somebody every day and, like, hanging out with them and then they're gone can make you a different person make you like an animal and want to take it serious. So that's really what it was, was just taking it more serious and then finding like the key steps to success of uh, eating right, um, sleeping right, um, making sure you ain't taking enough and just pushing yourself to the extreme to where you can't take it no more. And that's really like looking at uh, gaining weight and stuff. And then just having a camera around me and like making sure I'm okay or like pushing to be better or comparing to everybody else, like that's one of his things. Like I'm not I'm not just anybody, I'm not just a group of a group of people, like I'm more than more than what I am and pushing to be better. different mentality because it's a different support system. 
and Freeport, you know, you could be down three points and, and people are leaving with a bad lead. It's like, we're looking for a reason to, to get them out of there. Uh, and you don't understand, you're not there for yourself, you're there for these kids. Uh, I know last year we played Melvin North, they were, they were uh, six and three in conference. Uh, the fact that when they, the first round fell, they, they came against us, we were three and five. And I think they ended up beating like two or four. Uh, on the last second touchdown, they beat us. Uh, you know, but people had left by that time, they didn't see that. You know, uh, it, it, it's, it's a thing where nobody understands what your actions do to these kids, that you need to make a break. And, and you can help them so much by being consistent on what you do, or you can destroy it by being consistent on what you do. I mean, it's, it's a two, two part thing. Uh, just even our athletes in free form. You know, I, I look at, uh, you know, I hate to bring Matt Chambers up right now, but you know, he just recently won conference at his school at St. Xavier. You know, we don't celebrate that. You know, uh, my old son just won a national championship. You know, you don't celebrate that. We don't celebrate our athletes and make them want to come back and be involved. What we do is we push them through and when it's done and over with, we tell them bye. You know, and, and, and with me, that's one of the, my personal things that I deal with the most is I never want any of the young people who leave me to ever feel they were used for that moment. Uh, I definitely don't want them to feel like they were just enough, you know. Uh, so we have kids over my house still. When they go to college, they come back. That is what helps get me through things. I said, when I go back to the year, what made my year, what helped me get through that year, was the phone calls from the students, was the the uh, conversations. They don't text me sometimes. What you doing? W Y D. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost 50 years old. What is he doing? <laughs> but he'll text me at night. You know, what you doing? I'm what's going on with you. Is it? We'll conversate for a little bit or. You know, or, or he'll, he'll, he'll tell me, you know, I love you, Devin, or thank you so much. Or, those little things make a difference, you know, because they let you know you're doing something right. You know, no, we don't have the kids that we want, but we currently have a lot of kids playing football right now. Uh, we have, I said, Zay. Zay should have been Nick Tennant quarterback last year. Uh, and politics play a part of it. So, but, but at the end of the day, if you can build relationships with your kids, if you can make them mm -hmm. feel and understand how amazing they are, you have done your job, and that's the one thing you can do.
four games out of our 20 games of the year. Um, but then moving forward, last year, this past year, um, it was a lot better. We had fans back in the stands. Um, still a unique part of student athletes because we had a lot of online classes. You don't get that whole college experience. We had a small juco. But, you know, we had fans there. We had to still test. But hopefully this next upcoming year, um, things are really back to normal where we've got full fans, we've got to go through the testing all the time. And we can just do more team activities and build our chemistry where, you know, especially for our student athletes, man, they're, they're isolated pretty much the whole time when they're on campus because they don't want to attract COVID. So hopefully this year we can do a lot more stuff. Our guys can get out in the community more. It's quite excited to be here today so we can actually get out of the community and start meeting our guys. But no, it was difficult, but Looks like brighter days are coming. I mean, I know you're doing the free work, so uh, this is probably your first impression. I hope it's a good one. Uh, but I do want to ask you so you, you're new to Highland, uh, this is your first year here playing ball. Uh, so, kind of give us a little backstory on uh, where you come from, uh, what kind of basketball, where you play, uh, and just what basketball means to you as a whole. I'm Basically, you told me to go to school and I took me out of my school and I went 
for the help. Great. No. So I got a terrible situation right now. I got ladies. Before I got to hire, I was in another shootout. I didn't touch Coke. I'm like, Coke, I'm down to shoot out. And he was like, man, I love you. You need to be the next day, And he was like, man, stay safe. And I was like, I will, folks. And but it was just crazy because I was leaving them. So I was going to be my baby mom. And um, I was leaving to go to the road. And I was going to go to the road. I was going to go on the train. On the 79th. And this thing was like, the person that was next to me, he was like, at least seven, eight foot away from me. And this thing, they started shooting, all these things, and I felt, I was running on the train, the escalator was going up, and I was running down. So, I'm getting this thing on the train, you know, she did about it. So, you know, my arms on the, from the platform, the train platform. So, you said they won't get me, so I was off the run on the train, or off the run across the street on the expressway, you know, the car got passed, so. I know we might, y'all, I know y'all probably this is my like, day, but it is what it is, you know. But I had to go get my phone. I ain't gonna sing it to the whole panel, but more the story, I've been through a lot of hands, and got my home, the best man in there like that. And luckily, I still have So that's why I'm here today. Yes, sir. 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 Yes
graphics guy put together uh, for him. Uh, we got a podcast interview with Jeff coming out uh, this coming week. We're excited to sit down and, and talk to him, but we wanted him to come out here, uh, engage with the community, learn a little bit more about it. Uh, so check out that picture right there. That's the graphic you'll see on YouTube. Uh, we appreciate him bringing that out. That's awesome. Uh, we got some things to pass around as well, too. Uh, but Gerald McClellan, Jr., the face of Freeport Boxing, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're excited to hear what he's got to say. I'll let Gannon take it away. So, yeah, so before we get into some spe specific, excuse me, brother Gerald, just kind of talk about a little backstory, what's he been up to. Just give us a run of who you are. That's kind of, you know, a little uh, starter for that. Okay, so uh, my name is Gerald McClellan, Jr. I'm the son of two-time middleweight world champion, uh, Gerald McCullough Sr. And um, basically, I started boxing when I was about 16, 17 years old. Um, my story is, I got, a, I got a real, like, underdog crazy story, man. Like, uh, uh, like these young man that was uh, just on tape and getting interviewed and you know, told me your story. My story is, like, my mother had eight kids, seven boys and one girl, single parent. Um, and my dad, he was, he was boxing, and um, he was, up until 1995, he had got into a bad accident in the ring, which uh, left him uh, blind and paralyzed from the waist down. So, up until, I think I was about, about seven years old. So seven years old um, is when my dad, you know, that father for me, you know, stopped like being in my life. Now in a community, you know, where it's single single mothers, you know, single parents, you know, raising kids, you know, especially uh, a single mother that's raising eight kids by herself, you know, it's gonna be really tough and really hard on them. So you know, you know. Uh, by my dad being blind and paralyzed, um, dad right there left me with no um, person that could, you know, stay on me like, you know, how Anthony is on Jose, you know, and I need that. And every, every kid growing up needs that. You know, I got kids of my own, like, I'm like great, like hands on with them. So like I said, um, around like 13, 14, 15, you know, I'm in school, you know, in, in the streets and, you know, join gangs and stuff like that, man, things that I shouldn't have, you know, um, but it's about, it's about learning from your mistakes and anytime that you can, you know, go through something traumatic, such as, you know, um, like Zay said, he had a close friend that died, you know, and that right there motivated him to go harder and, and push harder in his, in his, uh, in his profession, in his sport, man. So uh, what happened with my dad, that kind of one of made me push harder as far as boxing. Like, I always wanted to do boxing. So when I was 16 years old, I got into boxing. And um, I was boxing and Rockford, Illinois, and at the Patriots Gateway Center. And I had a couple fights as an amateur, still getting in trouble a little bit because, you know, you know being in the streets, you know, you, you come across so many things as a, as a teenager that, you know, like parties, drinking, and stuff like that, and, you know, you got your peers, you know, you, you got peer pressure and stuff like that. And all of that is just a whole mixture of, you know, when you come to age, um, those are tests, you know, to, you know, those are gonna shape and form you the way you, um, I say, the way you, the way you maneuver through life and when you get to where you're going, this gonna show, those are gonna, those tests that you come across are gonna show exactly your character and how much determined you are to do what you want to do in life. So, like I said, 16 years old, I got into boxing and I had a couple of fumbles, you know, uh, 
wanted to, uh, juvenile detention and stuff like that. Uh, I had some kids, um, but I still, throughout all this, you know, from 16 through 22, because something happened in my life when I, was, when I turned 22. From like 16 through 22, having kids and hanging out and stuff like that, and I'm still in the gym. I'm still just a little bit motivated, but you know, I ain't have that motivated mindset like I got now. So when I was 22 years old, I had went to prison for uh, a few years. I uh, worked uh, about six, six and a half years I had went to prison. And when I was in there, that's when I had told myself, I was like, listen, I sat down myself, I had talked to myself, I was like, look, we're gonna keep on continuing this cycle, uh, coming in and out of prison, or you're gonna get out, you're gonna do something to your life, and you're really gonna show your kids that you know, you're someone to look up to for them. And uh, you know, so I came home after doing six and a half years, and I had my mind made up. I wanted to be a hero to my kids. I wanted to be, you know, um, a reflection of what my dad was to me. My dad was my greatest hero. He still is my greatest hero. He is one of the reasons why I push myself as hard as I push myself down. Him and the fact that the whole community of 815, Freeport, Rockford, everybody, like what I'm doing now, I'm, I'm basically showing through example, through experience of what not to do, what not to become. But also, you know, I was able to do prison time, come home, reform myself, and just, you know, be a guiding light to anybody that may have gotten into trouble or anybody that may have, you know, had thoughts in their head, like they wasn't sure this is what they wanted to do, or they, they got one foot in, one foot out, and you know, I'm just, if, I tell myself all the time, that if God is allowing me to be the, the living example, you know, to younger generations, you know, to, to do exactly what they want to do and be successful with it, because, okay, last year, I just went pro, I had my first win as a pro uh, in the third round of the TKO knockout. And then I just had my second pro fight April 29th, and that was on pay per view in Las Vegas. Um, I had a whole bunch of uh, great boxing. Uh, I had Roy Jones Jr. I had who else? Mike Tyson was front row. I got to take pictures with him. Um, Shane Shane Logan, Shane Shane Logan. Jr. Like it was just a lot of people there that you know basically all the hard work that I put myself through since I've been home. I came home in 2019, you know, for six and a half years, almost seven years. So if I can, you know, slip, bump my head, and still go through something, get out, get it right, clean myself up, and on the road to you know being successful. It's, it's, the possibilities is endless for anybody, for anybody. Like right now, I'm, I'm, I'm 33 years old. So, you know, and then I have my third pro fight uh, coming up September 6th, and that's gonna be in Atlantic City, New Jersey. And that's gonna also be on uh, pay per view. I got, what, like four or five sponsorships. And all this comes through hard work and dedication. You gotta be serious about you know anything in life that you're doing. Like don't 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 strive to fix. Don't have your mind halfway made up. You know, just like the guys you know that was just doing that was just sitting at this table. You know, everybody got their own personal stories, and my story resonates with theirs because you know, and I'm able to I'm able to 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 hear their stories and be like, oh man, like. I feel where they're coming from, you know. I know firsthand, you know, uh, losing friends and family members and stuff like that and, and the pain that it causes. But at the same time, you gotta let the pain, the anger, 
you know, when you're stressed, you know, coming from home, anything like that, you gotta let that motivate you, you gotta let that push you. you. Like, you can't never give up on life, ever, because I never gave up. My dad right now was blind and paralyzed, he's been like that for 28 years now. And, like, he ain't gave up. You know, he, he got, he got, he got what? Three sisters that all take care of him, you know, 24 hours, you know, seven days a week. You know, and they gave him, you know, a part of their lives, you know, to take care of him. So, you know, just seeing that and seeing um, the, the constant motivation and inspiration that I get from my hometown from 815, like, just everybody congratulating me and sharing my posts and uh, different people putting me on podcasts so I can share my story and, you know, everybody telling me that they proud of me and they happy for me and they, they glad that I changed my life around. Like, it's just, everything is, everything is like, it's motivated me to do more. And um, me and Bryce, we connected on uh, social media, on Instagram. Uh, he had seen my highlights, and um, he seen, uh, I did uh, an interview. And from that interview that he had seen, he reached out to me, and he was like, hey man, we put something together, man, for the town, and you know, for 815, and for the community, and it's gonna be positive. I see you, you doing real big things, and you know, everything you doing is positive, so we would like to, you know, invite you to this so you can you know, tell your story and give off some, some inspiration you know, to the younger generations. I said, man, listen, anything that got something to do with this town, I'm not coming, I'm running. Anytime you ask, I'm running, like, because I want to be the inspiration and motivation for anybody that's coming from up under me that's from this town, and not just this town, but the world, though, but from this town, because this town is, I'm, I'm from here, my dad's from here. And any type of help, any type of positive words, like anything, any movement that's, that's, that's for the community, I'm gonna be a part of it because I love this place. And you know, like Anthony was saying, like, you know, you don't get too many people that come from here that's, you know, celebrated and, you know, pushed, you know, to continue to do the right thing. Now, like I said, my my support system is beautiful. Like, like I, sometimes, like, I don't even know how to feel sometimes. Like, you know, okay, so my last fight, April 29th, was on pay per view. And I think the, I think the pay per view was like, probably like 30, 40 dollars to order. Like, and that's something that, you know, on uh, on pay per view, like your favorite UFC fighter or boxer, you know that you will order. You know, average people like like us in here, because I don't I don't consider myself any bigger than anybody in this room. Everybody like is the same to me, like so like for anybody in this room and for this town to order my event, you know, and share it, and other people say. Well, uh, Drum Club, he's, he's fighting uh, this day. Uh, everybody go share it. And I get 50 to 60 to 70 shares. And everybody saying that they're going to uh, order my uh, pay per view event and show love. Like, all of that just makes me train even more hard and push me more. So, Bryce, like, you reached out to me and you said, man, let's come together. Let's do something, man. Like, like I said, I'm not coming, I'm running.
We appreciate that very much. Uh, Cameron Bardell is actually a co-worker. He works with me and Gannon. Uh, he played sports growing up, just wrapped up his college baseball career. Uh, and now he's giving back to the youth, uh, doing baseball lessons every single week, uh, sometimes multiple a day. Uh, so he's, he's decided to give back uh, and appreciate the future generation of baseball. Uh, so I'm going to start this off and just ask you guys a simple question here. Uh, what has it meant over the years uh, being an athlete uh, yeah, you right now, current Matt, uh, what does it mean uh, growing up, being an athlete, uh, having a busy schedule, uh, taking advantage of uh, making friends, all that, what does it meant to you guys individually uh, being an athlete? Uh, I think sports are much bigger than what they are. Like, um, you learn a lot of life lessons from them. I mean, just, I never had Devin as a coach, but him and Sean Dad i made a huge impact in sports. And I know he always wanted me to play for him for football or wrestling or whatever, but I never decided to do it, but regardless of that, he made a huge impact. And I mean, like, just the, like, the guys you meet, it's amazing. I met him, I met him too. I met a bunch of the guys out there through that, and they'll be some of my best friends for the rest of my life. Um, so I think it's just way more huge than just a simple sport, like, you learn so many life lessons that will help you down the road, and yeah, I mean, just as simple as that. Um, yeah, I, I would, um, I would agree with Cam. You learn a lot of lessons from sports, um, life lessons, things that you'll use to to the day you die. You learn most from sports. You find friends that they turn into family, and coaches are like father figures, and same with your friends, parents, and. It's just a lot bigger than the actual sport itself. And um, me personally, I know I used to, I love playing sports because it's just in Freeport there's not a lot to do. Um, so if you're playing a sport, you're you're having something to do, and it was always fun for me. Kept me out of trouble. Just kept gave me something to look forward to. So sports are yeah they they're all, they're fun. <laughs> Uh, so with you guys both being um, called athletes, uh, time management is a huge thing. With some of the younger people in here that are, whether they're playing or not, Tim, time management skills are you know very important as you grow older and stuff that we've learned going through stuff for good and bad reasons. But talk about time management. Uh, Juggle and that, both you guys went away to schools and play sports, so that's one in itself different than also throwing the baseball and football and that. Kind of talk about that. I mean, yeah, I mean, I went to Juco for two years, so it was a little easier for me. I was pretty laid back at Highland. Um, I could only imagine what this kid had to go doing two sports at a four-year. Um, but I just did one more year at a four-year, and it was a lot of work. Um, I mean, you have 6 a.m. lifts, a couple days a week. You're lifting every day, and I mean, you're getting home sometimes from games that midnight, one, two in the morning, and then had to turn around and do homework and do homework all Sunday, and then go to school again, practice, and then do it again. So I think it gets harder as you progress, make progress through as you get older. Um, high school was kind of a breeze, and it's probably not a breeze for everybody, but at Freeport, at least for me, it wasn't that hard. Um, especially with doing baseball and stuff like that, I kept me busy. Um, Juco was pretty easy. It was laid back, as I said. Fegan didn't really have us out there grinding too hard. It was just kind of you show up and throw a ball around. Um, and then you go to a four year, and it was a lot of more work. And I was, I was in for it. I was not ready for that. But I balanced as well as I could. I kept my grades up, and I was eligible. And yeah, that's all I can ask for. And um, time management, I think that me personally, I manage my time very well, but it's not always the easiest thing, especially when you just kind of want to just take a breath. But um, in high school, I did three sports on top of trying to get good grades, so always busy, but I liked it. Um, then in college, going straight to a four-year out of, out of high school, I didn't know really what to expect, but I thought I could handle it, and for the most part, I could, but it still was pretty tough because 
Like sometimes you gotta remind yourself to, to eat or something like that. Like you, you, you do so many things throughout the day, like you have three classes, two practices, then you gotta lift, and then you got homework on top of that, and then you, you forgot to eat. So, I mean, it's not always the easiest thing, but I think if you're self accountable and you want to do something and you want to be successful at it, then you, you'll get it done. I know we've touched on this quite a bit with the people we've had up here speaking, uh, but I want to ask both of you guys now, uh, what does it take to follow your dreams? Uh, how have you guys individually done that through your athletic careers or uh, even just in your daily life? Uh, what, what advice would you give to people out there that are struggling to come up with an answer on how they can, they can uh, achieve those dreams that they've been looking forward to the last couple of years of their lives and they just don't know how to do it? Uh, what's the advice that you give, the, give to them people? Um, I would say um, some advice to follow your dreams. Um, you just gotta go for it. You just gotta pull sand, no half sense. Because, I mean, as long as you got a good support group, even if you don't have no one supporting you, you gotta support yourself, you gotta believe in yourself, and if you really wanna do something, you'll be able to do it. Yeah, I'd have to agree. I mean, I have a great support group with my friends and family, so it makes it a lot easier. But uh, at the end of the day, it takes a lot of hard work just to be successful in general. Um, but just keep pushing, honestly. You'll get there one day. Uh, for a final question here, what does it mean to be a pretzel for you guys to live in Freeport and grow up here for all the years and kind of what you know built you into the young man you two are? Uh, to me, I mean, I love being a pretzel at the end of the day. Uh, I went down to Missouri and played ball, and I mean, I had the big town with the parties and all that or whatever, and honestly, it's nothing like going to be honest. Uh, I love it here. Um, <laughs> um, no, but at the end of the day, like it's always going to be home to me. It's always going to hold a special place in my heart. Um, it might not be the most fun, it might not have the most stuff to do, but I think the people that are here is what makes it great. So, yeah. Yeah, I love being a pretzel too. Um, it's always awesome when you go somewhere and you tell someone what high school you're from and they're like, that's a stupid mascot. But, uh, I love it. I think it's awesome. Um, the community, um, there's a lot of good in the community. There's, it doesn't get talked about enough, all the good in the community. You, you always hear about all the bad that's going on, but there's so much good in Freeport, A15, just the, the entire area. And, I'm proud to, to be from <laughs> Yeah.